This is the new Yurtopia Carbon e-bike. It's an electric bike made of carbon fiber and packed with tons of high-end features. A torque sensor, carbon belt drive, and smart tech like a built-in radar system with turn signals that project onto the ground. It even has a smart bar with a built-in display, voice control, haptic feedback, and security features like fingerprint unlock and a 4G connection with GPS for tracking and theft protection. With a price at $2,800, it's a contender for other high-end e-bikes like Van Moof or the Cowboy electric bikes. Yurtopia let us try a review unit for a couple of weeks so we could put all the components and features to the test. We'll put links to this model e-bike along with deals and coupons to save you money in the description of this video. Let's get right into it. Unboxing the bike, it comes in a box that makes it easy to unpack. You lay the box flat and pull open the box and remove the cover. Inside, the bike is neatly secured in the packaging, along with the charger, saddle, user manual, and the battery in another box. The bike is already 90% pre-built. Yurtopia made a great assembly video that shows it step by step. Looking at the design and build quality, it has a sleek look with most of it made of carbon fiber. The frame, fork, handlebar, and even the seat post tube are all made of carbon fiber with a twist design underneath the seat post, giving it a futuristic look while allowing the seat post to be adjustable. All that carbon fiber makes the entire bike super lightweight, making it 30 pounds, including the battery. The bike frame comes in two sizes, medium and large, and the review model we got is medium, which is suitable for riders up to 5 foot 11 or 180 centimeters. Looking at the components, the motor is a smaller 250 watt hub motor in the rear wheel. The drivetrain is a single speed with a Gates Carbon Drive CDN belt. Having a belt instead of a chain means it's smooth, quiet, and clean with no oils, meaning no grease stains on your pants. It's also maintenance free, and Yurtopia says it should last up to 30,000 kilometers, or about 18,000 miles of riding, before it needs to be replaced. The Yurtopia also features a torque sensor. These are found on higher-end e-bikes, whereas many lower-cost e-bikes use a cadence sensor. The torque sensor determines how much force the rider is applying to the pedals and applies power to the output accordingly. This means the motor engages quickly, and when riding, you almost forget the motor is there helping you. Now, keep in mind the Yurtopia doesn't have a throttle, so it's a pedal-assist bike only. And riding the Yurtopia, it feels light and nimble. It has a top speed of 20 miles per hour, and once you reach that top speed, the motor effectively stops helping you and you're pedaling on just human power. But since it's a single speed, you'll be limited by how fast your legs can pedal. When riding up hills, it will take on moderately steep hills, but you'll want to turn on turbo mode and add some extra leg power to push it to the top for steeper hills. For braking, it has hydraulic disc brakes with no branding on them, so we're not really sure who manufactures them but they do work well to bring the bike to a quick stop, and you can easily lock up the tires. The battery is a 360 watt hour removable battery that sits flush in the frame of the bike with a key lock. You can either charge the battery in the bike or remove it to charge inside. The charger is a four amp fast charger, so it can fully recharge the battery in two and a half hours. Looking at the range, Yurtopia advertises a 30 to 80 mile range that will vary depending on factors like your weight, the mode you're riding in, and the terrain you ride. In our range tests, we found that you can get around 30 to 40 miles of range going pretty fast in mode three, while you'll get the 60 to 80 miles of range when riding in eco mode. Now getting into all the smart tech this e-bike has to offer, the smart bar is well designed with the LED dot display integrated inside. The display is bright and easy to see and shows you relevant details, current speed, battery level, and speed mode. For controls, on the left-hand side is the multi-button control. Pressing the up or down button will change between the four pedal assist modes, comfort, sport, and turbo. You can also turn off the motor altogether if you want to go all manual. Pressing and holding the left button for three seconds will turn on the headlight and taillight. And the headlight is also integrated into the smart bar. And it's a Saint VZO headlight, meaning it's designed to keep the beam focused directly on the road and out of the eyes of other riders or cars. On the right-hand side of the handlebar is the fingerprint sensor. You program your fingerprint using the app when you first set up, and you can unlock the bike either using the fingerprint sensor or with the app using Bluetooth. Once the bike is locked, there's a gyro and accelerometer, so it knows if the bike is moved and will turn on the alarm, which is a loud alarm and vibration. 
However, we found that the alarm didn't seem to always come on, even after locking the bike and trying to move it. The fingerprint sensor also functions as a button. Pressing it once beeps the horn, and you can also customize the horn with different sounds in the app. To turn on the turn signals, you press either the left or right button. The display will show you when the turn signal is on, and the rear tail light will emit a projection of the signal onto the ground. But unfortunately, the projection light isn't very bright, and cars are probably not going to be looking out for those on the ground. We wish the turn signals were placed directly on the bike with bright arrows or lights blinking. When you use the turn signals, it'll automatically turn on the built-in millimeter wave radar to check for cars behind you. If it detects a car, the handlebar will vibrate to alert you. While this is useful, it's only activated when you have the turn signal on. If you press and hold the circular button, it'll activate the voice controls. You can give it commands to change volume levels, ride modes, and even turn on and off the headlight. It is useful, but in our tests we found that it doesn't always capture the voice commands, so you can't really rely on it consistently. Turn light on. Turn right carefully. Looking at the phone app, it has a clean UI and lots of different features, including a dashboard that shows you bike details like battery life, an interactive map, a detailed ride report of each ride, and you can even go in and replay your ride path. It even has a calorie counter and CO2 meter saved. The bike even has over-the-air firmware updates, and you can expect your Topia will be rolling out new updates and features for the bike over time. For example, Later this year, they'll add the ability to see the turn-by-turn -turn GPS notifications inside the Smart Bar LED. They'll also improve the voice commands in the Smart Bar. The Yurtopia even has a 4G eSIM built-in, so it can track the location of the bike using its own cell connection. This makes it perfect for theft prevention, and the 4G service is included for one year. After that, it's $30 per year, which is a reasonable price to charge. Finally, there's a few features we wish the Yurtopia had included on the bike. For example, it doesn't have any fenders or mud flaps, so you definitely don't want to be riding in the rain or puddles. Also, the seat post adjustment does need an Allen key, so you won't be able to adjust it on the fly. But overall, we think this is a great e-bike packed with tons of features that most other electric bikes don't even include, and it's definitely a contender to others like the Van Moof or Cowboy e-bikes. All right, that's it for now. Next, be sure to check out our other e-bike reviews and comparison videos.